free, mandatory, and universal secondary education ushered in by labor, unheard of in any other part of the Caribbean. People came here to find out how we did this. We seem to take these things for granted. And so 50 years later, there was hardly a recognition of that landmark, outstanding development and revolution in education that shut the doors of poverty for so many of us. It was labor who bought universal suffrage, the right to vote, which was the right of the privileged people and the privileged class, the, the people who had property, the property class prior to 1952. Women couldn't vote before that time as they had no property. So it was labor who boldly fought for women to have the right to vote. And again, I say, don't take it for granted. It was labor's housing revolution that saw low income houses for women. Women in the low income bracket were able for the first time to be property owners, turning the keys for the very first time. Hundreds of single mothers were now able to provide shelter for their children and their families, firm in the knowledge that continuously moving from house to house had finally come to an end, and that they can now pass on their property to their children to secure their future. It was labor who did that. Again, I say, don't take it for granted. Labor was always very progressive as regards the role and the value that we place on our women. Um, Bratcher was a very progressive thinker. And so you had people like our mother, Juni, and Leibold. She was a fighter for women inside and outside of the party. She was supported by people like Margaret Moses, Ivy Harrigan, May Jeffers, Dicus Matthew, Enid Adams, Emily Allen, May Warner, Maud Nisbet, Dicus Matthew, Polita Leibold, Veronica Byron, Cecilia Newton, Pete Warner, to name just a few. Most of these women, you know, have already passed into the great beyond. She was, she was the person who led labor women, the trade union women, National Council of Women, Toastmistress, and eventually she became the president of CARIWA, which is the Caribbean Women's Association. It was labor who appointed the first female permanent secretary in 1973 in the person of Lilith Kelsey. Ni Warner. Then in 1976, Labour again appointed Christine Atherton. She was appointed as the first female accountant general. That was the first Labour administration. Under Dr. Douglas, we saw an escalation of women to leadership positions. More than half of the permanent secretaries were women, including in ministries like finance, sustainable development, and national security. Women headed social security, finance, financial services, public prosecution, DPP was a woman, the magistracy, the first female ADC to the Prime Minister, Imelda Isles, Captain Imelda Miles, she was served under Dr. Douglas. In the diplomatic field, Labour appointed female ambassadors for the first time. Not just one, but five. Five women served as ambassadors under Labour. You had Jacinth Henry Martin, ambassador, Ambassador Rosalind Hazel, Ambassador Jasmine Hoggins, Ambassador Shirley Skerritt, and Ambassador Astona Brown. And of course, our first female CEO of the National Bank came under Labour administration, and she did an excellent job. St. Kitts Nevis had two female speakers. Both were appointed by successive Labour governments, Ada May Edwards and yours truly, and it's still the case today. In 1980, Labour appointed Eugenie Byron Condo as the first female senator and the second woman in Parliament, the first, of course, being Ada May Edwards. And so after 15 years of a PAM government, it was Labour again who appointed two female senators in 1995 and the first female deputy speaker, the senators were Anne Wigley and yours truly, who also served as the first deputy speaker. Later, Jacinth Henry Martin was also appointed a senator. So all four female senators to parliament to date, to that time, up to that time, were all appointed by a Labour government. 
Justin Henry Martin, as you know, was elected to office in 2000 as the second female to be elected to office. The first, of course, being Constance Mission of Pam, who was elected in 1984. So Labour focused all the time on empowering women in every way. And particularly, we focused on the financial empowerment of women. And so we introduced the WISE program, Women in Small Enterprises, to help women in micro and small businesses. It was a part grant and part loan um, program, interest-free, so it was zero interest being paid. You took half, half as a grant, and you paid back half without interest. We established women in construction under the PEP to give women wider career choices and certainly to provide them with greater income because as you know, the construction industry pays more than say up at the industrial estate. And so it gave women a wider choice and increased income to help provide for their families. We also provided support services like the one-to-one -one laptop program and the REACH program so that minimum wage earners, minimum wage single mothers can feed their families and at the same time have their children properly educated because we still believe that education is the key to take families out of poverty. And so we wanted to provide families with that opportunity. Women had job security and with nowadays what you find is that People are so scared. People are intimidated. Job security is no longer there. And also, the REACH program, which was terminated, it means now that minimum wage mothers can no longer afford to send their children to tertiary level education at CFBC. And this was one of Labour's policies to see every family with at least one person in it with a college degree. All those things have been retarded with the discontinuation and the termination of the REACH program. The growth in the economy, so many women in small businesses improving the quality of their lives. However, unfortunately over the last two years, since February 2015, we have seen a vicious attack on women and so much job insecurity all over. Over 200 women have been dismissed, sent home, disrespected, demoted, terminated by this government at all levels from permanent secretary to cleaner. Just to give you an idea, Astona Brown, Willis Vasquez, permanent secretaries, Sandra Davron, Vanslyn Williams, Larissa Chiverton, Mrs. Jacqueline Morris, she was in charge of the early childhood unit. Judith Rollins, now Judith Rollins Paul, dismissed. Dahlia Saunders Livingston, both from National Housing. Karen Phillip, a young lady with seven children, dismissed without reason. Delphina Keynes Basso of Nevis. Beulah Mills, also of Nevis. Giselle Romney, Kendris Norford, Claudette Jenkins, just terminated, like that. Hermia Morton Anthony, we had Greta Sinanin, that was the wife of the DPP, because the DPP filed a matter against them. They dismissed the wife without notice. You had a 19-year-old, Salima Garaden, just sent home like that. Again, no reason. Tamelia Herbert, dismissed from National Bank. You had Cleopatra Roberts, Kasney Phipps, both of them sent from tourism, sent home, just dismissed. Miss Jimmy of Nevis, a cleaner sent home Diane Williams Humphreys just to call a few of the people who were dismissed. And these are just dismissals. It's nothing to do with promotion, I mean demotions, frustrations. I mean, right now you have three women, three qualified women who are at home, sent home by this government just doing nothing. Two of them have been at home for more than a year now, being paid. And the other one, she has been at home for about three to four months. And so you have these women at home, waste of talent and a waste of taxpayers' money, all out of spite and vindictiveness and politics. And so today, we're seeing an erosion 
of the quality of life that our people are going through, especially our women. The laptop program has gone at a time when CXC will be having online exams from this year. I just learned that Barbados just recently gave laptops out to their children. We were way in front. Now we are behind, just as we are behind in the economy, gone from first to fourth. And so we are also seeing a government who is assassinating the character of women in an effort to intimidate them and to silence them. We heard Dr. Harris himself attacking a female journalist in an effort to intimidate her and to shut her up. I hope she does not. I hope she stays strong because we must have freedom of the press. They must have no voice. So part of their strategy now is to use these fake Facebook personalities to say the most vulgar things about women who they identify for attack for one reason or another. I have on several occasions called on the Prime Minister, the Minister of Gender, the Senator and the Deputy Speaker, and the government as a whole to dissociate themselves from these vulgarities and indignities that are being heaped on the women of this country. But they have chosen not to because they are all part and parcel of this plot. They endorse it fully. So, so much for the empowerment of women. This government is also using women as a front to displace other women. I want to advise these women who are, who are being used in this way to protect your professionalism and protect your credibility because what is happening is that your credibility is under attack. For example, they dismissed Judith Rollins Paul, the manager, fully qualified and professional woman from NHC and has replaced her with someone who is an activist for Harris. Look at what is happening at NHC today. Total chaos and confusion at NHC. And that is what happens whenever politics trumps professionalism. And that is what is happening throughout this country. So women right now are worse off than they were two years ago. The government is making every attempt to humiliate frustrate and erode their confidence. They eroded all their efforts to be financially independent by cutting off their income, sending them home, or reducing them by demoting them in some cases, and also by increases in taxes and fines. And so small business people are worse off, and people generally are suffering. The hashtag, as we said, is be bold for change. I therefore want to encourage women on this International Women's Day 2017, to think of bold ideas and bold acts that can be implemented to change your lot for the better. We must come together beyond the political divide and join as women in the fight to protect women's rights, especially their right to job security and to financial independence. I want to say that the Labour Party is ready and willing to help to restore women's confidence, to restore women's job security, and the financial independence so that women can be in a better position to take care of themselves and their families. Join the St. Kitts Labour Party in its fight to restore a better quality of life for all our people and for women in particular. There is an ancient African proverb that says, show me a nation's women and I will show you a nation's future. Right now, the future of our nation seems rather dim, especially when we look at how our women are being treated. I want to tell you that we can have a bright future on the labor. Let us join together and make the lot of women better. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm.